Um, I'm going to talk to you about Open Envoy and uh, try to do a quick whirlwind tour of uh, what it is, what it does, how it does it, and why anybody should care. Uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, certainly all of this technology is the product of, and frankly a lot of this content is the product of, uh, Steve Pope, our Chief Technical Officer, and uh, Dave Riddick, our Chief Software Architect, uh, both of whom know more about networking than uh, I will ever learn and have forgotten more about networking than I will ever learn. Okay, page down. Okay, so what is Open Onload? Open Onload is a user level networking stack uh, invocable uh, within user level application contexts and usable in a hybrid mode between both user and kernel mode provides for fully POSIX BSD compliant uh, sockets implementation for TCP IP, UDP, uh, allows us to deliver low latency, high bandwidth networking capability, but do so in a way that integrates seamlessly with existing infrastructures and existing applications. So uh, use it completely seamlessly under any application. Uh, so uh, before I jump into uh, what uh, Open Onload does, uh, a quick uh, sort of overview of uh, generally how, it, how it's done elsewhere. Uh, so on the left of here, the, uh, the sort of conventional, and this is obviously a big abstraction, the conventional view of, uh, you know, you've got your, you got your kernel application, kernel uh, networking driver that's doing all of the talking to the, uh, to the hardware, uh, and doing it all in service of the application delivering data to and pulling data uh, off of, uh, off of uh, uh, sockets and, uh, and working via interrupt uh, exchanges with the, uh, with the kernel driver. Um, so you know, how do you make this go faster? Well, one way uh, in the middle is uh, you can obviously completely bypass the kernel for networking and you know, there's plenty of architectures out there offering this kind of a solution. Uh, you know, go do your go do your OFED driver or whatever, um, which works fine and will give you great performance. Um, but uh, it does so at the cost of you got to now implement your application to a specialized API. Not so great if you've got millions of lines of code that you just want to make go fast easily, um, or uh, run over the top of a set of middleware. You know, whether it's MPI or your 29 West, uh, if you're in the financial services space or whatever. Um, but again, you know, not everybody wants to go and recode their applications to use those uh, use that middleware, um, and not everybody uses the same middleware. Uh, so the third option is, of course, you can go and layer over the top of that bypass driver a uh, a user level protocol for doing TCP, UDP, and so on. Um, but the problem here is that uh, implementing that entire protocol is hard, number one. And number two, now you're faced with a choice of for any given operation or flow, are you going to do A or B, and it's all or nothing, basically. What Open Onload does is addresses the, the sort of either or choice by instead implementing a hybrid model. Uh, so Open Onload simultaneously has a user level stack that is invoked or multiply invoked across application uh, or multiple applications, uh, as well as a kernel level protocol that communicate with one another via, via shared protected stack and uh, pass messages back and forth such that we can do high performance but also fully conformant operation in congested environments. We can do mixed operation of accelerated and non-accelerated interfaces so uh, Open Onload can handle having other interfaces in the system uh, and steering the, steering the traffic to whichever protocol stack it needs to or, frank, or just handing off to the kernel uh, for file descriptors that Open Onload doesn't need to worry about. Uh, we have protected shared stack state which allows us to share sockets between processes. So if you, uh, if you want to do things like fork a process, we're able to, uh, we're able to map the shared state between the two processes uh, such that they can both access effectively the same physical network interface through independent virtual interfaces. And finally, we provide compliance and completeness. So it is 
uh, a complete uh, protocol implementation by virtue of one, having 10 years of development in it and doing uh, almost all of the RFCs, um, and two, the fact that it's a hybrid architecture, meaning that open onload can pass off to the kernel if it needs to for anything that it doesn't know how to do. Uh, so what we end up with is something that is standard, compliance, and uh, totally standards-based at the application interface, uh, the socket, um, and standard down on the Ethernet wire so that you can't tell looking down from the application or if you hang your network sniffer on the network that there's anything going on in terms of acceleration, uh, which means we can do either single-sided or dual-sided work. So what does the hardware do to help support this? Uh, what we have is a, is a network adapter that provides a large number of essentially Q pairs, uh, DMA, independent DMA engines, uh, combinations of send and receive queues, uh, descriptor processing uh, queues, and uh, MSIX interrupt uh, queues, uh, each of which is independently uh, assignable, definable, and uh, filterable via, uh, via network headers to, sh to ship individual flows to any one of these thousand VNICs per port. Uh, so what we end up with is effectively a thousand independent virtual interfaces that we can spread around between the CPU cores uh, or the threads within a CPU core, uh, allowing us to both flow steer to receive side scale um, and uh, to support uh, locality and uh, for both NUMA implementations as well as uh, in, in multi-core implementations, being able to support a uh, high level of cache locality, both temporal and spatial. So, how does uh, Open Onload do what it does? Um, so, traditionally, you know, kernel networking, everything goes through the device driver, uh, network stack sits in the kernel, and everything is uh, handled by, you know, received packets, getting processed uh, when an interrupt is raised, and then passed off through a socket and up to the application. Whoops, wrong way. What Open Onload does is invokes a uh, copy of a dynamically loaded library uh, in each application context, uh, maps a VNIC to that, uh, to that library, and uh, allows us to directly steer each networking flow straight into the application in user space so that we're not doing any, uh, any interrupts, any context switches, and we're delivering data to uh, exactly where it needs to be. And by virtue of a lot of flexibility in the way that we filter, uh, we can provide locality uh, in terms of both delivering data to the, uh, to the cache context of the application that's going to consume it, as well as delivering interrupts in the case where we're doing interrupt uh, handling. Uh, how Open Onload does this uh, is really the uh, three main constructs. Uh, one is by uh, by invoking a copy of a uh, of a loadable library in a user space um, in combination with a kernel uh, kernel library that you see on the right here. Um, the second is by providing mapping of shared trusted state between the user context and the kernel context, and then a separate trusted stack state uh, that exists in, entirely in the kernel, so that we can provide uh, so we can provide security between application contexts. Um, and then finally, by basically replicating, creating a, a shadow copy, if you will, of the file descriptor table so that we can interpose or intercept uh, accesses to file descriptors and either act on them ourselves in the, uh, in the onload library or pass them off to the kernel, uh, either uh, in the sort of bottom case you see here where we pass, uh, pass through, use the shared stack state, and we handle the flow, or uh, the top case, this little sort of red box, where, uh, where we would identify that this is a file descriptor we don't need to operate on and just pass it through and let the kernel handle it. Since the stacks all live in the kernel, uh, they are of course persistent through things like doing execs uh, where all of the st all of state would be destroyed. Uh, and by virtue of being able to create multiple instances of that block on the upper left, 
and multiply map them to that same shared stack state, we can uh, do things like handle multicasting uh, directly within Open Onload by having the Open Onload stack deliver the, uh, the multicast packets to multiple separate applications. Um, we can support uh, forking of either trusted or untrusted children. So when we go and spawn a new instance of this, uh, we can either uh, take the newly exact uh, empty instance that has no state and go and recreate that state by stabbing all the file descriptors, uh, then going and uh, querying the kernel, remapping up the state, and creating the shared state, uh, or not doing so, and only keeping the file descriptor table uh, if we have an untrusted uh, child. I'm running long, so I will move more quickly. Um, so a couple of slides here that basically say uh, what open onload can do is uh, use combinations of uh, interrupt-based handling, uh, spin-based handling. So we can. Uh, so the normal behavior for open onload would be to would be to spin wait in a thread. Uh, but of course, that doesn't fly when you start getting oversubscribed and you have more threads than you have cores. Uh, in which case, we can do either complete blocking for interrupt or do combinations of spin blocking, uh, where we'll spin for a while. Uh, and then give up and fall back on, uh, on looking for an interrupt uh, such that we can uh, provide optimal performance across a lot of different workflows. And all of this is managed by a lot of, uh, a lot of heuristics uh, built into open onload. Uh, so spinning or not spinning, uh, you know, normally we would, uh, in a, in a non-oversubscribed uh, situation, we would spin without interrupts. This provides really low latency, low jitter, uh, where we don't have contended CPU resources. Um, in uh, highly contended situations, we can run with interrupts uh, so that the threads will block and be scheduled. Uh, and in either case, we can do the protocol processing in the context of the application. It's done in user space. Um, or we can also pass it off to kernel mode. So in the case where we need to be able to progress a, uh, a TCP stack uh, and the application has either uh, has either been descheduled or uh, or it's actually or it's even been killed, uh, we uh, we enable the kernel stack to take over and to progress those uh, progress those flows um, in the absence of doing the processing in the user stack. Um, the, this hybrid architecture also is really required to support the full uh, POSIX API uh, by virtue of shared stacks, uh, also supports uh, debugging and diagnostics, and so we can map those shared stacks uh, into a debugger. What this gets us from a performance perspective uh, is uh, shown here. Um, so this is a graph showing uh, both kernel and open onload performance uh, x-axis, millions of messages per second, y-axis is a half round trip latency. And what you can see from this is that with open onload enabled, we get a couple of things. One is uh, really low latency, that's flat out to very high message rates. Um, the second is very low jitter. So the lower line here, the blue line, is the, is the average latency. Uh, the red line is the 99th percentile uh, latency. And uh, for most of our core customers in the financial services, high frequency trading space, uh, they care at least as much about what the slowest message is uh, as they do about what the fastest message is. Um, and uh, so that jitter is a, is a key, uh, key aspect for them um, and one of the reasons that we're as successful as we are in the HFT space. Um, finally, this is, uh, this is single stream performance. Uh, by uh, going to multi-streams, uh, we can fairly easily get up to uh, 20 million packets per second in a contemporary Romley platform, uh, you know, or about line rate, basically. So concluding, uh, what the hybrid architecture that we've implemented with Open Onload provides is uh, a combination of both performance uh, with full application compatibility, uh, so existing apps will just run underneath it because it's a, uh, it's a full uh, POSIX sockets implementation. 
that uh, we get full uh, API compliance by virtue of uh, using mixed kernel processing um, and using this, uh, this shared stack model. Uh, we allow for arbitrary mixing of accelerated and non-accelerated interfaces. Uh, and uh, we provide a very flexible hybrid model of busy waiting and using, uh, using interrupts for, uh, for servicing uh, the TCP stack. Um, and then finally, uh, by virtue of all of this, open onload provides for either single or dual-ended usage. As I said earlier, uh, it is standard protocol compliant at both the socket level of the application and on the wire. Uh, so, you know, use open onload on one end, both ends, uh, or neither end, uh, all of it works. And where you use open onload, you'll get performance improvement. That's it. Thanks. Questions?